everyone. So for our Teach Us a Theory project, we decided to choose Nola Pender, and her theory is about a health promotion model. So to begin, we'll just start by introducing our theorists. So Nola Pender, she was born in Michigan in 1941. She was an only child, and she became really interested in nursing at the age of seven after she spent time um, watching nurses care for one of her aunts that was hospitalized. In 1962, she received her nursing diploma from the School of Nursing at West Suburban Hospital in Oak Park, Illinois. And then she later completed her Bachelor's of Science in Nursing at Michigan University. And she continued on, and in 1969, she completed her doctorate in Psychology and Education at Northwest University. Later, she completed her Master's Level Studies in Community Health Nursing at Rush University. And since 1990, she's been a professor and associate dean for research at the nursing school at the University of Michigan. So very well educated, long history of education. So the phenomenon that led Pender, Nola Penderson to um, this theory is early in her nursing career, Pender realized that health professionals only seemed to intervene after people developed acute or chronic Ill illnesses. Um, attention was focused on treating them after the facts, after the fact, which led to lives being altered. It was this realization that led Pender to commit herself to a more proactive stance through health promotion and disease prevention. So to help us understand this a little better, we have our snapshot of what you know uh, nursing might have been like back when she received her, her degree early in the 1960s and 70s. Um, and this is when she recognized her phenomenon as well. Back then, lifestyle in the United States had begun to change a bit. Obesity was starting to become more prevalent. Fast food was becoming more popular, and more people were entering into desk jobs. It was decreasing the physical activity in America. Uh, it was these changes that caused diseases like diabetes to increase, and it was diseases like these, like diabetes, that inspired Pender to emphasize the the importance of health promotion and disease prevention. So the class of theory for Pender's health promotion is a mid-range theory. This is because she outlines specific steps that need to be taken in order to assist a client in effective health promotion. So these steps, they include assessment, planning, implementation, and evaluation. So some of the main ideas of Nola Pender's theory um, so Nola Pender's theory is centered around the idea that nurses have a responsibility to promote health improvement to patients before their health and lives are negatively impacted. So nurses should assess clients to determine which factors impact their health promoting behaviors. She gives a list of 11 factors that might contribute to or take away from a client's ability to change. Nurses should assess and address such factors and help lead clients towards healthy behavioral changes. So some of the concepts of her theory. There are several factors that impact a person's ability to change. Pender lists, lists 11 significant factors, including prior related behaviors, personal factors, perceived barriers to action, interpersonal influences, perceived self-efficacy, and commitment uh, to a plan of action. Nurses should, should consider each of these factors and address issues that the client faces in order to improve their health-related behaviors. So here's a description of uh, Pender's theory. The Pender's theory, like we mentioned, is a mid-range theory that gives several steps that nurses should take in order to help a client improve their health practices. The nurse should first assess the patient and determine which barriers are preventing them from changing and living healthier lives. Next, the nurse and the patient should work together to develop a plan to help the patient change. The patient should, should then implement the changes into their routine and evaluate how well they were able to incorporate the health promoting behaviors into their lives. Pender also has several assumptions related to health promotion. These include the idea that individuals seek to express themselves through their behavior, that change must be self-initiated by an individual, 
and that health professionals can influence people through their lifespan. So now we're going to see the theory in use, um, being used in an article, peer reviewed uh, journal entry. So this one was entitled Educational Technology Based on Nola Pender, Promoting Adolescent Health. So the introduction, the human papilloma virus, HPV vaccine, is a primary prevention tool that be, can be considered an important device to reduce the incidence of cervical cancer. The lack of awareness about cervical cancer and the relationship with HPV is noted as one of the greatest barriers to acceptance of the vaccine. So we have a research study. Um, it's taking place in Brazil, and the HPV vaccine was made available by the Brazilian National Health System in 2014. So in 2015, research was carried out in the municipal schools by the health program at by the health program at school in the city of Juan Ziero de Norte. Sorry, don't know how to say that targeting female students aged 9 to 13. So the objective of this experiment uh, was to present an educational technology in nursing directed towards adolescents about vaccinations against HPV based on the health promotion model by Nola Pender. Her model was chosen for its simplicity and clear structure, which uses assessment planning for in intervention and evaluation as its foundation. So the method that was used, they had two strategies, so two strategies were used to present the three key topics of HPV, cervical cancer, and the HPV vaccine. So the first strategy was a theoretical presentation with two different scenarios. So we look at scenario one. A mother is telling an 11-year-old daughter about adolescence and body changes during this phase referring to the personal factors present in the theoretical model of health promotion. The mother hears information on the TV about the HPV vaccine, tells her daughter to go get it. The daughter refuses. Scenario two, three adolescents, having recently received information from a health professional, are having an extensive discussion about risks, causes, benefits, and adverse effects of cervical cancer, HPV, and the HPV vaccination. On account of having an educational intervention with a healthcare professional, the teens were empowered by their ability to make an informed decision for themselves about their own health promotion. So the second strategy used with the same group of adolescents was an application of the information given. Groups five and five through six adolescents were formed, five to six adolescents were formed, and cards were submitted with statements to be discussed among themselves. They were to sort through what was truth versus myth and present their point of view on the various subjects, subject headings, which were adolescence, cancer, cervical cancer, human papillomavirus, human papillomavirus vaccine, human papilloma vaccination, and autonomy. It was discovered that even after these activities, further education by health professionals was needed. It was also noted that the student's autonomy was important for their understanding and their decision making. So here we have Nola Pender help, Pender's health promotion model in the HPV with this vaccination research. If you take a look at this, all these, how they're inter, you know, linked together, we have our prior behaviors, and this affects the understanding and their barriers to the vaccination feelings in relation to the behavior, to emotional reactions and whatnot. And we have the health promotion model right up at the top here. Um, so if you take a look at that, you can just see how they're interconnected. So our conclusion. So Nola Pender's theory guided the educational technology of nursing with the following components. Evaluation of personal factors, perception of benefits and barriers interpersonal and situational influences, commitment to a plan of action. The findings of this study indicate and reinforce the need to invest in effective educational technologies that emphasize autonomy of adolescents in the decision-making process. It was noted by the researchers that the use of Nola Pender's theory to subsidize nursing technology 
contributes to the strengthening of nursing as a science. So Pender's influence on nursing practice. Historically, nurse educators have taught patients how to manage illness. In the future, the focus must be on teaching people how to remain healthy. As more people grow in their awareness of the activities that lead to good health and become knowledgeable about their own health status and the health of their families, the overall health of the population will improve. The role of the nurse in education and health promotion has become increasingly important in today's world. Patients are increasingly willing to take their health into their own hands and nurses must be willing and able to educate them on how to change their behaviors to promote health. Pender's list, list of factors that influence a patient's ability to change is a helpful assessment tool when determining which changes must be made and gives ideas on how a healthcare professional can effectively assist someone in their road to change. In any nursing setting, whether it be in an emergency room, mother baby unit, or a medical oncology floor, nurses have an increased ability and responsibility to provide effective education. And such nurses should consider Pender's theory when providing patient teaching. So to finish up, here we have a statement from our group. It's our personal reflection on Pender's theory. It says, we think it is extremely applicable today, especially since most people have access to so much information on health promoting, health promoting ways to live in this country, at least. There is much more emphasis today to stay healthy. And as nurses, Pender has offered us a strong connection between the physical and psychosocial aspects of human beings. We can use these connections and insights to help our patients in many ways, help themselves by doing what it takes to avoid disease states in the first place. Her theory is clear and simple to understand.